to performance this season, averaging just seven and a half points per game through the first two contests. As you look at the starting lineups, Raekwon Battle is the ball as poorly as they've shot it in the first two games. That's a disappointment. Now you saw Bali Dante right there, and boy, what a start to his 2022-23 campaign. 18 points, just under 10 boards per game in the first two contests for this Duck squad. Here's Battle. Tough ball away, gets that one to go. Boy, great one battle with a tough shot. Yeah, very tough shot. Well defended, but better offense. Again, a career high 24 points for Raekwon Battle. Right now, second in the big sky, very early on with 16 points per game. Curie left it fly from three and knocks it down. You mentioned his struggle shooting. That might be what he needs right there. Well, 1 3 1, a little bit of a surprise right there. Secondary defense for Montana State. Oregon did a really good job attacking him. Aguirre, his first triple of the season. Left open in the corner, Luckalot buries that corner three. And Luckalot is a good shooter from 1-3-1 one, one again for Montana State. And for the Bobcats coming off that 70-57 win at Long Beach State. Held the beach to just 2 of 14 from downtown and defense has been their calling card. So far here in the 2022-23 season. Bartholomew, the Colorado transfer. That one way off. Three-point shots are open against the 1-3-1. Luckily, I have the look in his eyes. They'll go down to Bello. Battling with two big men. And he gets called for the walk, and that's going to be difficult when you have to go up against two seven-footers. It certainly is, and there's a third one waiting on the sideline to come in. Khalil Ware, their, their heralded freshman. Really, really good double. Dante with the initial defense, and Nate Biddle came over to close the deal. You know, we mentioned a second ago, Nate Biddle getting the start. His first of his collegiate career definitely offers some size, and offensively, he can take it down low, and he's got the outside look as well. He's done a good job the first two games. Dante down low. He's fouled and he's slow to get up. Yeah, I think they got the foul before the shot right there. And uh, you certainly don't want to see the foul of Dante down. Good job getting the ball inside. Beat the trap right there. And Folly was looking to dunk it. Jabril Bello took the foul. I believe they got Bello, but it was clearly before Dante shot it. Yeah, especially with the injuries that Dante has dealt with here in Eugene. You see a fall like that, and, and you just get scared if you're a Duck fan. Will Richardson off on that triple. And again, looking in folly, Dante finally healthy after coming off that ACL injury. Didn't, and basically didn't play for two years. Right. It's really, you know, and, and had such a good year last year for them. He was healthy the entire year. But you're right. They all hold their breath if he goes down. You know, Dana Holman said kind of on a minutes restriction last year wearing that brace. Gurrier yeah. not really noted as a three-point shooter. He's more of a slasher and scorer inside, although he did make that initial three. Patterson for three. This box out by Gurrier kept Bello off the glass. You mentioned Gurrier kind of started as a post player in his time in Syracuse, kind of developed that perimeter shooting a little bit. Bartholomew can't get it to go, but Dante cleans it up. It's the best way to beat a zone. You beat it on the boards, get extra opportunities. Speaking of zone, we got the matchup zone for the Ducks right now. Battle for three. Richardson takes him to the paint. And an offensive foul. It's a turnover. A little bit out of control right there. Will Richardson struggle in the last game? Seven turnovers against UC Irvine. Uh, Three-point shooting early has really been a problem for the Ducks. Believe it or not, Ben. They started both games one for 18 from the three-point line. That, that's almost impossible. I know it's definitely been a struggle for Dana Holman squad so far. You mentioned Will Richardson, two of 12 from downtown. Dante climbing the ladder to send that one out of bounds. Excellent help defense by the big guy. We talked about three seven-footers. Here comes the third one, Khalil Ware in. For Dante, I think they probably want Clay Jamison to look at uh, Dante, make sure he's okay. 
Great health defense. Well, showing the height that Dante has, and right on cue, there's Ware with the board. Didn't take him long. Freshman out of North Little Rock, Arkansas. And he can knock it down from outside. That went off the heel. Dana's looking at like he wants the ball inside. He does not necessarily want to see another one for 18 start. They're one for five so far. The Ducks from three point line, I should say. Montana State on a scoring drought over the last two plus minutes. Yeah, you know, Dana Allman talking about specifically Khalil Ware. He said, you know, he's consistent in practice with threes. Doesn't take a lot, but he does take good ones. And I imagine it's probably the same for the rest of this Oregon squad out of bounds. Out of Osibor and a turnover on Montana State. Good job by Quincy Gurrier. Fronted him, made it a difficult pass inside. Great Osibor sophomore from England used to say and you've got players from Canada for Oregon players for the United Kingdom for Montana State well, Definitely a lot of international flavor on these two squads Bartholomew goes to Biddle back out Richardson Bartholomew off the beautiful pump fake Now it runs in and out Good pass by Richardson setting up Keyshawn It will stay with Montana State. Well, the shooting struggles continue for Oregon. Two of eight from the floor. All knotted up at five in the early going. Well, so far early this season. Well, the thinking about it an awful lot. I think a good move by Danny Sprinkle going zone early. You know, that's the shot that's usually available against the zone but again the injuries that we talked about four scholarship players not available and two of them two of their better shooters so uh, it's been a challenge so far no question for the Oregon Ducks but uh, there's no help in sight the four players we'll talk about them more a little bit later are not coming back soon so Dane is basically down to eight scholarship players and that's very thin lineup. Here's the one three one zone again from Danny Sprinkle. Yeah, a couple of weeks ago, Dane Allman was saying, hey, look, there's no magic one. There's no solutions to guys missing practice. You know, the conditioning suffers, and it's hard to get a rhythm in practice to get things installed offensively. Well, that's the thing with the guys coming back. Like you say, it's going to be instant help. It's not instant help if you're not playing. With all those sores, I think that was a three from the left corner. Yep. So now one of seven from downtown is Oregon. Raekwon Battle lets it fly from deep and knocks it down. He's a good shooter, a little bit more of a streaky shooter than a pure shooter, but nonetheless, he's not a guy you want shooting the ball uh, open on the perimeter. The big guy co-reserve of the year coming off the bench last season for that NCAA tournament team for Montana State. Ducks down to one seven footer now, Ben, only in the game. Uh, look more like a uh, traditional uh, college team, but they're sticking with that one three one. Right now, it's great. Osibor, the uh, sophomore from England in the middle. I was going to say, like you said, it, it's been working so far for this Montana State squad. Here's where the fall away. That one too strong. Offensive board. Going back up and foul is Gurian. Uh, offensive rebound is a good sign right now for the Ducks. That's their second offensive rebound. Uh, you said where it was a little bit of a fall away. When you're just big as he is, 7 1, you got to just square up and go up a little bit stronger. He's got a nice stroke. He's going to make a lot of fall aways, but you're looking out there, there's nobody that he has to fall away and shoot a jump shot. He needs to face the basket a little bit stronger than he did on that one. We saw the numbers just a second ago. One of seven from downtown now for Oregon. At the free throw line, you saw the miss. I mean, it's not just from the floor. It's not just from free throw land. Oregon has struggled from the charity stripe as well, shooting just 61%. Both a major, major problem, particularly with the schedule. You pick this game and the games ahead, you got an NCAA team and a whole bunch of NCAA teams on the horizon. Yeah, it's definitely a... Tough schedule coming up for Oregon, which we'll highlight a little bit later, and that one blocked. Keyshawn Bartholomew with a nice play, good help defense, blocked it with his left hand. Yeah, 
Here he is with the ball right now. The Colorado transfer slashing the lane, and that one set back by Osibor. And a scramble for the loose ball. ball in. Osibor's down. Osibor's holding yeah. his left knee. I hope he's okay. Or he holds his left. I don't want to speculate, but he's holding his left leg right now. Really good block by great Osibor, and then a really good rebound inside, but then the pile up right there. Arrow, I believe, will go to the Ducks. Uh, Osibor limping off. That is not a good sign. Brett Ritter, the 13th year as a trainer for Montana State, helping him off. Yeah, if you look right here, kind of came down awkwardly while trying to. Really good yeah. play. Yeah, he did come down awkwardly. He can't see. I think he was trying to avoid stepping on his teammate. Dante back in the game for Oregon. Down to the freshman on the block. Timer at five. With the right. Nice move. Stronger shot. There's nothing Jabril Bellow, as good a defensive player as he is, he's just too short to affect Khalil Ware's shot inside. Yeah, six foot nine, where it's seven foot. You got those three seven footers on this Dutch squad. They definitely got the height advantage. Yeah, and Jabril, that's a generous six nine, calling him six nine. Khalil told me at practice yesterday, coach, I'm not seven foot, I'm seven one. So I said, okay, I got it. All right, seven one. Seven <laughs> one it is then. Look out. <laughs> but again. Looking at the newcomers for Oregon, we've highlighted it throughout this early season. Khalil Ware, again, a McDonald's All-American. Kusnard, one of those players that you were talking about, won't be back until about early January out of South Carolina. Keyshard Bartholomew on the floor, who has the ball right now for Oregon. A couple new pieces to this duck squad. Well, Brennan Rigsby is the best shooter on the team. He's a knockdown three-point shooter, and they really are missing him right now. We've got another turnover. They got away with a push inside. Keyshard's telling... Khalil Ware go for it, but he really got moved out. Uh, good defensive play in there. There's that one, two, two, three quarter court pressure that we see Oregon use. They'll trap, they'll just go back sometimes to the matchup zone. They mix it up, keep the opponent off guard. There's the matchup. There's Robert Ford, the third, back in his home state right here in Oregon. Bellow on the block, faces the double. And Ford left open for three over Dante. And where skying for that board Jefferson High School in Portland, Oregon neighbor of yours Ben. Yep Count it and one a strong take by Soares to get a chance for a three-point play Follow Soares is a competitive player. You're gonna see him on the floor a lot. He makes things happen right there now, Jabril Bello just didn't get in front of him. Good call by Randy McCall, the official there on the baseline. Uh, Rivaldo saw the opening, and before Bello could rotate over, uh, he went right through. Uh, this is a small Montana State team on the floor right now. Asibor, we saw him get hurt. Bello, is that his second? That's because his, Danny got him out. I was yeah. going to say that's number two. That's his second foul. They're in a little bit of trouble, particularly if Asibor could not come back. Oh. And the free throw. Woes continue for the Ducks. Yeah, without the reigning Big Sky defensive player of the year on the floor, with all those seven footers that Oregon has, they can definitely really take huge advantage right now. Caleb Fuller. Battle with the shot clock under 10. Well, Montana State just looking for any sort of opening, and it's Fuller unloading, and that one's short. Caleb yeah, Fuller. Graduate, another transfer. He and Bella, the only two players that Montana State will lose this year. There you go. You talked about it. Knocking down that three ball, Khalil Ware. Well, he's shown early the many things he can do. He certainly needs to put weight on, but he can board, he can block shots, and he can really stroke it. Says he watches a lot of Anthony Davis, and you can kind of see some similarities in their games. Long bodies can knock it down from the outside. Obviously, a, a good player to, to watch as Oregon's now on an 8-0 run. He's got to watch some tapes of AD when he was playing in college because he did a little more inside than he did outside when he was in college. And here's Gabe Reichel checking into the game for the Ducks. Bartholomew slashing. Nothing but glass. And yeah, got moved out by the defender. 
Transition three ball on the way. Offensive rebound by four the third and goes back in. Zayas missed the shot. Smallest guy on the floor got the offensive rebound. Back to the zone. Mixing it up. Over the top to Dante, and it gets whacked on the entry pass. There's not much you can do when you throw the ball inside to a big man like that. And finally, Dante, Oregon's doing it with the defense so far. That's the difference in this game. With his family and, uh, you know, maybe refocus on, you know, why he's in the States, you know, to get an education, to, to get in a great degree. So, you know, something his family doesn't have an opportunity for other than him because of basketball. And so... You know, I've, I've seen uh, renewed focus, you know, determination, and I think a lot of that has to do with going home and realizing he's playing for a lot of people, a lot of family members really dependent on him. A strong take there by Will Richardson, but going back to Impali Dante, you know, you heard Dana Allman talk about it a second ago, that torn ACL in 2020, and the big man said it was hard because when he had that surgery, he didn't have his mom or, or nobody in his family around, obviously, but finally got to go home like his head coach was saying after six years of not seeing his mom, two seasons cut short because of those knee injuries. But, you know, he is off to a tremendous start this season now fully healthy. Great to see him healthy. He's an impressive young man. It's tough for the international players. Uh, they often don't get a chance to go home for a few years. Another missed three right there. Run on cue, he gets the board, throws it up at the right, and gets the friendly bounce. Good job avoiding the offensive foul there by Enfale. Oregon keeping the pressure on with, the, again, this three-quarter court. Sometimes they trap, sometimes they don't. This time not trapping, just dropping back to the matchup. But their defense is really bothering Montana State, as is their height. I was just about to ask you about that. You know, they're obviously off to a great start defensively. I mean, you see this Montana State team, they're struggling to get shots off so far in this one. Well, just, no one's used to playing against this kind of size, and Dana's teams always work on the defensive end. It's a foul they got away with right there. Reichel with the strip, and Richardson goes the other way for Oregon as the Ducks are on a 12-2 run. Richardson dancing, step back three, puts it in. That's a great sign because they need him to play with the confidence that he played with two years ago and even to a lesser extent last year. Yeah, we highlighted it in the open. Two of 12 from downtown coming into this matchup with the Bobcats and led the team in three-point percentage his sophomore season. So he knows how to shoot. He led the Pac-12 in, in three-point shooting. He's an excellent three-point shooter. But again, confidence. Guys in the NBA are the same way, Ben. You miss a, you have a couple games, shot doesn't go, they start shaking their head. It's hard uh, when it's not going in to maintain the confidence. And uh, certainly Oregon needs Will Richardson to shoot it with confidence and to score. And battle, wow. Excellent execution right there on the underneath out of bound. Sorely needed bucket there for the Bobcats. Yeah, that snaps a 7-0 duck run. Richardson thought about launching another three. He's going to launch a pass in and follow. He's going to say he's got the humongous size advantage down yeah. low on the block. Against Robert for the third. And Ford steps in front of the entry pass, but right into the hands of Richardson. Reichel off the fake. Mid-range J, no good. Pretty good defensive possession there for Montana State. Up ahead, a turnover by the Bobcats. Once again, into the hands of Will Richardson. Richardson trips, and a travel. Well, I'll tell you what, Will Richardson is just out of sorts when he puts the ball on the floor right now. Again, we talked about that confidence. That's the missing element right now for the fifth-year senior. No timeouts, no huddles. Just non you is very good. Very good team. Yeah, I agree with you. Definitely a, a great program out of the SWAC. And meanwhile, for Montana State, I mean, they're struggling to take care of the basketball right now. Six turnovers for the Bobcats early on. Yeah, five points off those turnovers for the Ducks. And you see them, they're just really struggling. This is a good offensive team. They're struggling to get a good look. That was not a good look. Yeah, trying. To get that over the seven foot Dante Raekwon battle. Raekwon is an interesting story. He's from near me where I live in uh, Seattle from the Tulalip Reservation. He's the first one to ever get a college scholarship off the uh, Tulalip Indian Reservation. And he hangs and gets whacked and he'll get himself to the charity strike. 
Yeah, Dana Altman talked about that at practice yesterday, and he talked about it this morning at the shoot-around. His bigs don't have to leave their feet. When you're seven foot, just stay on the ground. They did not do that. Both of them left their feet. I don't know who got the foul, and Fale or, or Nate, Nate Biddle, but he, he was leaving his feet. And he, Dana must have said that ten times between the two practices. I might be being conservative there. I want to cut and fall a break, but he does not want. His bigs do not need to leave their feet. When you're seven foot, you got those long arms that Fale Dante has. You stand there, they don't even see the basket. Tried to get it down to Dante in the turnover on the Ducks. Well, that's what the 1-3-1 makes you do. It makes you pass the ball, and you got to be careful. You see Dante inside. He thought he was going to lead him to the rim, and he went the other way. Good to see Osibor back on the floor. That was scary. A couple minutes ago in battle, knocking down another fall away. Well, battle is basically their offense right now, and he's creating those shots. There's another turnover. Dane is really upset with Glenn Mayberry. He thought he jumped in front of him. He is really hot. Yeah, Raekwon Battle, by the way, 11 of the Bobcats, 16 points earlier on. Glenn Mayberry's doing the right thing. He's going over and talking to Dana, but Dana is not exactly talking right now. That's. Another foul in the turnover. Oh. This yeah, is he, a good crew. I was going to say before the game, this is a very good, this is a good NCAA crew, much less a regular season crew. I was going to say, Dana Allman is still yapping over at Glenn Mayberry over on the sideline. In the corner for three. That one no good. One of the best looks they've had right there. Robert Ford the third couldn't convert. There's Nate Biddle going to work. Banging his way. Soares throws it up with the right. Second effort. Dante with a third effort. Playing ping pong inside right there. They just, too much dribble penetration, and then they just kept it alive on the glass. Uh, again, talking about this crew, uh, Glenn Mayberry did the right thing, went over and talked to him, but all three of these veteran officials work the NCAA every year. Dribble on the way. That one too strong from Tyler Patterson. He's been struggling. He's a very good three-point shooter. Started 34 games last year. Biddle, he can also knock Here down that go. three being a seven-footer. I was going to say, that's going to be such a luxury to have not one with Biddle, but also Khalil Ware, two seven-footers who can knock down the three ball. Particularly when your small guys are not making it right now. Dana Altman yelling at his team to get back. Uh, they didn't. He did not want them to press. He wanted them back and make them score against this half-court defense, which has really been a problem for Montana State. Bowler for three, trying to answer. Off the heel, off the back tap, and into the hands of Patterson. Hasselbaugh with good hustle there. Now he's holding his leg again. And one. Yep, counted. Strong take there. You gotta realize Caleb Fuller's the left-hander transfer. Played four years at UC Davis right there. He's a graduate transfer, played there first before he came over. Uh, one of the trio from uh, England playing for Montana State. And he's on the replay right there. A couple nice efforts there from Impali Dante. As Caleb Fuller will try to complete the three-point play. Yeah, like you mentioned. A trio of players on this Montana State squad from England. Caleb Fuller, Osibor, as well as Jabril Bello. And they're good players. All three of them are contributing players for this team. Caleb Fuller graduated from UC Davis. Came here for his graduate year. In four seasons with the Aggies. Three average double figures there. Offensive foul on the Ducks. Darren White with the call. I think Dana may not quite agree, but I think he's a little frustrated by his players. Got to recognize. Oh, yeah, no question about it. He had both feet nailed to the ground. <laughs> Dana doesn't agree with the gentleman in the black and white stripes. Coaches seldom do. 
We mentioned the turnovers for Montana State with six. That's now five on Oregon. Yeah, it was very one-sided about four minutes ago. It's funny how quickly things can change as Dante gets whistled for the foul. That's number two. And again, you look at the impact from across the pond with Osibor, Bello, Fuller, like you mentioned, some big playmakers for this Montana State squad coming over. Well, the guy that made it happen is that big guy sitting on the bench with Danny Sprinkle, uh, Chris Haslam, the assistant coach. He's from Southport, England. He was, he's was he been an assistant for 10 years at Montana State, and he was really the driving force. Uh, it's kind of interesting. We've got a, a coach sitting on the uh, – this Chris Haslam from Southport, England. Uh, had his hand in all three of those guys coming to – England, they all, uh, most of them junior college first and then eventually ended up at Montana State. Yeah, it's an interesting situation. You got Chris Haslam, uh, who was assistant to a gentleman sitting on the Oregon bench. Brian Fish was the head coach uh, for five years at Montana State. So you got to keep your coaches straight in this game. Good execution again on the underneath out of bounds play. You know, they've had success with that in this first half. And you speak of Brian Fish, by the way, Danny Sprinkle. Just eight wins away from surpassing him for 10th all-time in Montana State history. Ware banging on the block. Another fall away. Offensive rebound, Gurrier. And he'll get himself to the line. Doing a really good job working the glass, uh, the Oregon Ducks. When you're outside, shot's not going. And again, you don't have to take it all away. They've gotten a little bit of trouble with the offensive fouls. Stop, take the short jump shot, and depend on you got a pair of seven-footers and you got Quincy Gurrier on the floor. They'll take care of the rebounds, and that's what they're doing right now. Again, Khalil Ware didn't square up and go strong with it. Uh, you know, you've got to realize how big you are. Just square up. You don't even need to put it on the floor. Square up, get those shoulders facing the basket, and rely on that really effective jump shot that he has. I was going to say, because we've seen it shoot from outside. You've got that height or whatever. He's He's got some solid post game, and he's athletic. I mean, like you were saying, you would like to see him kind of bang more and be more strong up to the rim. Exactly. Battles had the hot hand for Montana State. Can't get that one to go. Tough shot. That one pinballed in and out. Good job by Montana State getting back. Now the question is, can they do a better job on the defensive boards? Biddle almost had a second three, but that one also pinballs out. There is Brown, the second, the transfer out of Cal State Northridge. Raekwon's always been a little bit impatient. He wants to make something happen quickly. Well, especially with Cabrillo Bella dealing with foul trouble. And that'll be a kick ball. Should have another timeout right there. Five-point Oregon lead. With just over three and a half to play here in the first. To rebound, to block shots, and to get to the free throw line. One of the best in the country last year. Shot over 200 free throws. Yeah, fourth in free throws made in the big sky last season. And still on the bench right now, picking up two early fouls. And yeah, the offense, you can just tell watching it through the first two games of their schedule. It just doesn't look 100%. Again, averaging just seven and a half points per game for a guy who was the big sky MVP last season. As that one is tipped in. But no basket as we'll go the other way. Offensive foul. Wow, tough play right there. Uh, battle was a little bit out of control, and they got an offensive over-the-top rebound that went in. But as we said, over the top, they climbed the Oregon Oregon defenders back. You'll see what happens. Raekwon again. Good defense right there by Khalil Ware. who Asabor hooked up with. Uh, that's a tough call. Asabor was hooked up inside. There's a lob over the top. Khalil unable to finish. Yeah, Ware almost had a highlight right there. Trying to go all the way, but Biddle with the chase down. Oregon with numbers the other way. Bartholomew off the punt fake. Fires on the elbow and knocks it down. His first field goal tonight. Good decision by Keyshawn. The fake got a better shot than the initial one he was looking at. That was keyed by the defensive block. And we talk so much about Nate Biddle offensively as that three rounds in and out right there from Tyler Patterson. But, you know, again, going back to Nate Biddle, I remember the game last year against Pepperdine where he basically 
got his first big run under Dana Altman. And Altman said after the game, his play on the defensive end is where he separated himself. You know, we talk so much offensively, but he can get it done defensively. Down yeah, there. I think he's a much better and much improved player from last year, Nate Biddle. Swords left open for three. Nice box out. Again, Darius small, but did a good job. Raekwon out of control again. You were saying maybe he's trying to do way, way too much. Uh, he's definitely he's definitely trying to do too much. No question about that. Now you look at Jabril Bello. Again, with early foul trouble. Playing only five minutes so far in this matchup. The Big Sky MVP, Defensive Player of the Year. And as P.J. highlighted, still not 100% healthy. Where? Throws it down and a foul. The freshman. Boy, he does not play like a freshman whatsoever he just, as he gets a chance for a three-point play. That fits the bill for a strong finish right there underneath for Khalil Ware. Again, when he gets it that close to the basket, there's little you can do, particularly when it's a small man. They gambled for the steal. Uh, bad decision right there by Darius Brown. He went out. You see him go out and misses. Now there's nobody left to help out. Sam Lekalot just came back and reached up. Gets his own miss. And how about two straight dunks for the freshman out of North Little Rock? Well, if you didn't see him in the first two games, this is the coming out party for Khalil Ware. Well, it's like you were mentioning a minute ago. You wanted to see him play more at the rim. And boy, definitely did that on those two jams. He plays over the rim, and it comes at a good time. You know how coaches love to finish a half strong. 7-0 run right now for the Ducks. Bartholomew trying to blow past his defender, gets his own miss. Gets it again. Wow. And regains possession. They're letting him play. <laughs> Dump down low to Biddle. Steps. Yep, happy feet right there from Biddle. Call Glenn Mayberry on the call. Again, same thing we've been saying about Khalil Ware the entire game. Nate Biddle's got to realize he gets two hands on the ball in the lane. Just relax. It's over with. Keep the ball up by your shoulders and just make a strong shot. Montana State needs to get a little something going into the locker room. It's been all Oregon the last four or five minutes. Yeah, no points for the Bobcats in almost four minutes. Robert Ford the third. We're trying to get battle off the screen instead of in the hands of Patterson. Oh, well, he's really struggling. Good three-point shooter last year, 38%, and he has struggled so far. Over four. Up top, Biddle. Splitting hairs. Ben, good shot, but could have been even stronger. Just catch it and go up strong. And Danny got a good touch. He can shoot it. He's going to be a good percentage free thrower as he gets more playing time and more free throws. He's going to make his free throws. Well, especially when banging down low, you know he's going to get stronger just his first couple games as a freshman as Montana State turns it over again on the travel. But when he gets more size, more muscle on him, boy, he's going to be a force to reckon with. Well, there's no question. Cliff Spiller, their strength and conditioning coach, is going to is going to get him in the weight room and he's going to get him to do a good job. And, for Danny Sprinkle, I'm looking over there, and I really sympathize. Nothing upsets a coach more than you come out of a timeout, you set something up, and you turn the ball over that first possession. That drives you out of your mind. I was going to say, I, I'm thinking back to when you were on the sidelines yeah. and how... It wasn't too long a trip for me to be driven out of my <laughs> mind. I'm telling you, now that would really, really upset you. I would hate to be one of your players when, when, when you're upset like that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm proud of some of those things, unfortunately. <laughs> Durier from way downtown with the clock winding down. And we'll get a foul on the floor on Montana State with 1.6 ticks left. I see it won't go as an offensive rebound basket, but that's really what it is. Uh, Nick Gazelis was trying to box out. They got him for the foul. I'm really surprised Quincy ends up taking the shot. They, they hold it for one shot. It's Quincy Gurrier who takes the three, doesn't make it. And uh, Darren White's over talking to the score. I don't know. What, okay, here we go. Coming in. It was Gazelis trying to block out Biddle. And again, Biddle's another one. Uh, so we're being oh, told boy. that Gurrier called for the flopping technical. Flopping. Exactly. 
major point of emphasis this year. It's a Class B technical. Raekwon Battle will get one shot, and then we'll go back and shoot the one and one on the other end. You can't embellish your falling, and it's offense and defense. People think flopping is just a guy trying to draw a charge. It's that raising, you snapping your head back, uh, like, oh, I got, I got fouled, or laying on the floor, like you got fouled harder than you did. I did not see it in live time, but they called it uh, on, on Biddle, I think, which is interesting. On oh, uh, Guerrier. Oh, on Guerrier, I was going to say, because Nate's the one that, after I brag on him being a good, very strong fashion. Now you see Raekwon battle right there. We talked about it. 12 points. The only Bob had a double figures. And Jabril Bello back on the floor for Montana State to start the second half. Picked up two quick fouls and sat the rest of the first half. I mean, they need offense here in the early going in the yeah, second half. And he can't get it that far away from the basket. He's got to be inside to do some damage. Battle strong. Taken to the paint and gets the bounce. Well, I'll tell you what. He likes playing against Oregon. When he was a sophomore, he had 19 points in Alaska uh, Airlines Pavilion for UW. Yeah, back in the days, he was playing with the Huskies. And that was against an Oregon squad that made the Sweet 16 as Gurrier buries a triple. Same way they started the first half. Quincy Gurrier <laughs> knocking down a three. I don't think you would have predicted that. Well, it's something you would definitely want to see. And something I'd imagine Gurrier definitely wanted. He hadn't hit a three-pointer yet in the first two games. He's got two already in this one. Yeah, that's really not his forte. But he's gotten him off to a good start both halves. Um, Jabril didn't have it control of the ball. He was wide open on a back door. Couldn't get him the ball. Yeah, you see Dante kind of gingerly running up the floor after hitting the deck. Yeah, I thought they were going to throw him a lob pass. I didn't want to see that because he's kind of holding that right leg. Biddle takes the extra pass. Instead, takes it into the paint. Bodying up, falls away, count it, and one. Nate Biddle with a chance for a three-point play. A Touched it. Glenn Mayberry is closer than I am. He didn't call it. Student section doesn't agree. Good ball movement right there, and a good, a wide-open look for Will Richardson. Again, we're used to seeing that go down. Not so far this year. There's well, he needed that one. Uh, Tyler Patterson has been a good shooter uh, all of last year, and he struggled so far this year. It's a welcome sight for Danny Sprinkle right there. And again, they need offense. They need a whole lot more. Then Raekwon Battle here in the second half to claw their way back into this one. Free throw line jumper on the way from Barbell. Good pass right there. Very good entry pass. I think it was Will Richardson. I don't know, but it was a really good assist. Found him on the left elbow all by himself. Jabril Bello can't even get a shot off, much less do something. Here we go. Well, for a second, you thought he was going to get one right yeah, there and lost I it. Thought he, I thought he was going to be able to handle it right there, and he was unable to. Going back to that last possession, there's Will Richardson. He splits the two defenders, finds Keyshawn Bartholomew. Excellent look from Will. Yeah, Bello hasn't even put up a shot yet in this game. Richardson off the Dante screen. Gurrier another triple. Dante almost had an offensive board. Yeah, he had to get, got a hand on it and couldn't quite secure it. Bowler over the top to Bello, still looking for his first field goal of the night. Surrounded by must say gold jerseys. I don't like, and Fale Dante again seems to be limping a little bit, walking up the court. I think Dana's going to get him out. Longtime trainer Clay Jamison to look at him. Look at the stats Bello put up last year. MVP and defensive player of the year. Obviously first team all-conference. Unanimous selection this year to the all-tournament team. He was the driving force in that 27-win team last year. Bartholomew now from downtown. Sean Bartholomew has looked good shooting the ball. He's done a nice job. Colorado transfer. Yeah, a great playmaker for Tad Boyle's squad. That one goes in the hands of Ware. They cannot get the ball to Jermaine Be or Jabril Bello. They're trying to find him. They just can't get it to him, or he's unable to catch it. Biddle thought about launching another three. Instead, again attacks the paint. Fall away. Off the front iron. Dana Altman's not had no problem with that shot. That was a good move and a strong shot. Yeah, 
They want to get the ball to Bello. They just cannot do it. Overware with the right. And the offense just not there tonight for Bello. Yeah. He's just not right. I'm not taking anything away. Oregon's not doing a good job. They're doing a great job defending him. But Jabril Bello is just not himself. Strong take. Richardson stops on a dime and goes off the window. A nifty move. I like Will Richardson. The outside shot's not going. What am I going to do? Put it on the floor. He's contributing with his passing. We saw that assist. And a good drive and easy finish inside by the fifth-year senior. 7-0 duck run. Patterson back down to Bello. Still looking for success against a pair of seven-footers and right there to meet him. Where again? Well, if you weren't an Oregon fan, you'd almost feel badly for Jabril Bello, what he's going up against down there. Where the big man for three. Splash. That'll be a timeout, I'm pretty sure, for Danny Sprinkle. Really strong first six minutes for the Oregon Ducks. Not been a problem for Mr. Durant. I don't think it's going to be a problem for Khalil going forward, but he would certainly benefit for some more strength and some more LBs. I was going to say round two because I, I mentioned Anthony Davis earlier when talking about well, one of the guys he watches, but he, but he also mentioned KD as well. Yeah, exactly. Well, they all, everybody wants to be like KD. <laughs> AD's a better comparison. Robert Ford, the third. That one off at the timer, one down. I mean, you can kind of see, you know, elements of both their games in, in Khalil Ware. No, takes, no yes. question. No question. And AD was such a dominant player inside also uh, for Kentucky when they won the national championship. Freshman on the block. I got to Guerrier. Richardson throws it up. And off the log, where? Can't tell you how I'm impressed by Will Richardson's adapting to what's going on. I know he would love to see more of those threes going down, but he's contributing in other ways. That shows a veteran and an intelligent presence. A 12 0 duck run. Now up to 14 points, where? Go, go, go. And a foul down on the floor. Hey. And Khalil Ware with a strong performance tonight. Timeout on the floor. DP last year, Defensive Player of the Year. He gets even more healthy. You nailed it. He's going to be a problem in the big sky. You know, it's really an interesting stat, Ben. You and I were talking about it before the game as we got Patrick McMahon. Ah, Khalil, it's all right. Uh, Goaltending, but again, contest the shot. Talked about 26 years between NCAAs. The constant was Mr. Sprinkle standing in front of that bench. When Danny Sprinkle was a freshman and the freshman of the year in the Big Sky Conference, he helped lead that team to the NCAA tournament. 26 years later, he led the team to the NCAA tournament. No tournaments in between. Look out. There you go. That's exactly what he needed. A triple from Will Richardson. I'll tell you what, a good lesson for youngsters, guys and gals watching at home. Go to the basket, see the ball go in a couple times, a layup or a free throw. All of a sudden, the rim looks a little bit bigger. Good look right there. Really nice pass from Keyshawn Bartholomew. Kind of returned that one that we saw earlier when he found Keyshawn on the left elbow. That time he found Will kind of on the left wing, and he finished it. Yeah, especially with that being his second three ball of the night. Well, I tell you, he's walking over like it's not a big deal. It was a big deal. That's a heck of a shot right there for Will Richardson. Under 10. McMahon, a kick out. Osibor, Robert for the three. And boy, look at the height that Ware got on that rebound. a strong rebound. rebound right there. And then the Ducks turn it over on the other end. Yeah, Keyshawn trying to post up Quincy Guerrier. He wasn't there. I'll tell you what, the shot clock has been on the Montana State players' backs all night. They have struggled and had to force up a number of attempts in the last five seconds of the 30-second clock. Yeah, it's definitely been a struggle for this Montana State squad to just get any sort of shot out like you see right there. The rejection and the Ducks pushing. Bartholomew up ahead to Reichel. Reichel. And the putback, but a foul before the putback jam from where? 
But the Ducks with a big lead, 55-29. Most of the other guys not really getting an opportunity yet, which is the norm uh, for a rookie in the NBA. But Ben Matherin, he was upset. We talked to him the night he was drafted, interviewed him when he came off the stage, and he was disappointed he didn't go even sooner. And he's still playing with that chip on the shoulder. I was going to say, there was definitely a fire, because and you nailed it, 19.9 points per game right now with the Pacers. Yeah, he's been unbelievable. He's a NBA Academy. i got to do a commercial for our NBA Academy. He was an NBA Academy guy down in uh, Mexico City for the Lat Am. Great Asabor, maybe one extra step. You can maybe do that in the United Kingdom. You can't quite throw that extra. That was a Euro that was called by Darren White. Well, you know, Asabor, a Spanish native, where, you know, the play there is more fundamental, but then more up and down when he started playing ball in England. So he could play both ways as Bartholomew launches for three and that one off. Well, he's going to be a good player if Keyshawn misses again, but uh, great's only a sophomore uh, eligibility-wise. It's hard to keep track of eligibility nowadays. <laughs> Boy, tell me about it. Almost had what would have amounted to one of the few buckets in the paint tonight for Montana State, but not to happen. Khalil, Khalil White tonight with 14 points leading the way for the Ducks as they go to the freshman in the paint but can't handle it. That was a tough pass. You try to go for it for two hands, but I, I don't know that that wasn't his fault. Baseline take, kick out. Look out. From the corner, three on the way. And knocked to the floor. Nick Gazelas. I don't think so. I was waiting to see the officials that flopping is a, a point of emphasis. They did not. Looks like they didn't even think about calling. I thought we were going to see a lot more with it being a point of emphasis. I thought we were going to see a lot more flop calls early in the year, and then the players adjusted. It appears they've adjusted uh, already. Uh, Gabe Reichel, interestingly enough, um, Dana moved him into the rotation uh, tonight as the seventh man. We'll watch here. Don't really see him uh, going going down to the floor there after he was fouled, but uh, two officials were right in the play. He chose not to call it. Got a line change here for uh, Dana. Yeah, Richardson, Dante Biddle back in the game, and Tyrone Williams checking in. And that's who uh, Gabe Reichel got the uh, playing time ahead of tonight. Uh, he's done a really, really good job. Of course, the brother of, of Zach, who played so well. Excellent shooter for Wayne Tinkle at Oregon State uh, throughout his career. Yeah, it was a part of that Beaver squad on that oh, Elite that Eight great run. great team that made the run to the Elite Eight. And you saw Tyrone Williams right there. The Grayson County Community College transfer led the nation in, in junior college with number, 28 points per game. Number one scorer in the country. But what, what's hurt him was he was not able to practice at all in the summer or make the trip up to Canada with his teammates. They were straightening out some eligibility issues, and he's still behind as a result of that. I guess he's making a living going to the glass tonight. 12 points now for Richardson. Board against Biddle. Wow. And it's not often you see somebody. They list Robert Ford the third at, at six foot. I'm, I'm going to question that a little bit. But you see him going one on one and trying to get a shot over Nate Biddle. Very, very difficult to do. Now, just to finish the point on uh, Tyrone Williams, hopefully he's going to help this team. Uh, he's. You don't play in the summer, you, you don't practice in the summer, uh, it catches up with you, and that's really been a problem for Dana Altman and his Ducks. I tell you, the guy he was really counting on, Brendan Rigsby, uh, who they won the National Junior College Championship out of Northwest Florida, excellent shooter, and Jermaine Kusnard, who was such a good player for the University of South Carolina. Yeah, but Kusnard, he is really out until January. That one knocked down right there by Soros. They call him Waldo. Nice, a nice take uh, on the other end. Patrick McMahon had three big rebounds at the end of that Long Beach State game to help Montana State end it. That was a strong move there by uh, Mr. McMahon. Richardson in double figures tonight for Oregon. Back down to Dante. Dante against the big sky defense player of the year from last year draws the foul. Yeah, that wasn't one of and, and Foley's strongest one, but not, not, nonetheless, uh, good play. 
15 foul on Montana State. And to update this again, I mean, it was a big point of emphasis coming into this third game of the season for Oregon. Three-point shooting, 39%, definitely an improvement. Oh, no, no question. When you start two games in a row at one for 18, you see a nine for 23 up there. And again, it's funny how when you defend as well as the Ducks have defended, the offense comes along. And Danny Sprinkle getting uh, Jabril out there. He knows he's just not quite 100%. You know, uh, Folly Dante, while he's on the free throw line right now, Ben, I think it's a point worth making. He's been not a good free throw shooter throughout his career in the mid 50s. He's so much better offensively. He's going to be living on that free throw line this year. He needs to improve that free throw shooting because he's going to attempt a lot more free throws this year. Battle with a nice reverse. But yeah, you and I talked about it before that game. With how many times he's going to get the ball down low, you don't want to get to a, a point where teams are going to start fouling him. Yeah, exactly. basically. Yeah, you, you don't want that. And then Folly, I think, is close enough to being a good shooter. Dana's gone. Nate Biddle looked over at Dana like, I didn't do anything. And Dana said, yes, you did. You moved. You can't turn when you set the screen. Randy McCall was right on the call. And Dana agreed with, with Randy. You see, Will Richardson is looking for the screen. He just turned a little bit. you got to stay. You can't get your legs, your feet any wider than your shoulders. And you can't move. You can't even lean in that direction. That's what Nate Biddle did. One Montana State player is scoring, and one Montana State player has been able to score in the paint. Mm -hmm. No one else other than Raekwon Battle has been able to do anything. 18 points for Battle, and that one a rainbow. That one almost scraped the ceiling on that jumper as Richardson goes back out the source. And yeah, you look at points of the paint between these two squads. 30 for Oregon, 14 for Montana State. Good call. Tried to do a rip through and follow Dante to dribble the ball. Great up. Great Osibor got caught with his hands in the proverbial cookie jar, but it's a pretty, it's a seven foot cookie jar trying to stay in front of and follow Dante. The third foul, by the way, on Great Osibor. Curie left open in the corner and makes Montana State pay. What was your analyst saying that Quincy Gurrier is not a good three-point shooter? What was he talking about? <laughs> Definitely needed a performance like this one. Gurrier now three of seven from downtown after not hitting one in the first two games of the season. Oh! Osborne almost with a putback jam. It's been that kind of night. Patrick Man can't finish. Great Osborne can't finish. Going over the backboard. All right, that's a shot that Dana Altman is going to want Will Richardson to look for. If they're going to do anything this year, which Oregon's accustomed to doing, it's got to round at a PK, then somebody else just as good. Then the league starts. How about Washington State here at home and UCLA in Los Angeles? Raekwon Battle couldn't throw down the alley with wanting a foul, but the Ducks go the other way. Good execution, and they couldn't finish it right there. Out of the timeout, Danny Sprinkle with the good play. They had the lob set up. Couldn't quite complete it. Richardson with 12 tonight. Shot clock under 10. Khalil Ware dumps it down to Dante. The big man ba banging. Where zips it down low, Gurrier, but rejected down low, and, and Dante's down. Dante is down. His left, left knee uh, right there a little bit. And hopefully he's okay. Battle on loads for three. And really the only output of offense tonight for Montana State. And that's going to be the... Fourth, fourth foul, I should say, on Sam Lekalotz. And again, this has been a big story coming into this 2022-23 campaign, the amount of injuries well, for Oregon. You see right there. You see Jermaine Cousnard. Uh, he's sitting right next to Luke War. Uh, Ethan Butler uh, ready to play a big, after a big redshirt year. And Brennan Rigsby, the guy that they really missed. Four of them sitting there next to each other on the end of that bench. Uh, and really no help on the horizon. It's not like they're coming back. Soon, another offensive rebound. The time it was Waldo Soares. Little banging, it goes off the glass. Banging a much smaller man and did a really good job finishing. Ten points now for Biddle. 
Yeah, you mentioned those injuries. It was just a crazy October and really has gone into November as we get a foul. But, you know, Dana Allman said, you know, we weren't able to get much done as we wanted to in practice, just haven't had the time with enough guys to get them reps. They, they were kind of behind where he thought they should be. And two of them are our first-year guys. You got J Jermaine Kuznod coming back. Uh, Kuznod has, really has no chance to, to do anything, at least uh, in the case of Ethan Butler. He was here last year. Luke War has been here for a couple years. But the other two, Brennan Rigsby and Jermaine Kuznod, who they were really counting on, uh, you see them right there. That's Kuznod on the left, Luke War, and you got Brendan Rigsby, and on the far right, Ethan Butler. That's four very talented players. Not that they're not playing, they're not even practicing. So they're not close to coming back. And Dana Altman's been left with eight players, eight scholarship players. We just looked at what that schedule's like coming forward. Uh, it is going to be a bear for them to get through uh, November and December and try and get this team healthy. You know, I remember at Pac-12 Media, Dana Allman saying we couldn't even play five on five just with the amount of injuries. So hard to get in work there is Ware goes to work on the block. Shot clock at six. Ware tried to zip it down low to Gurion. Yeah, just uh, tight quarters to make that pass right there. Good that he looked for it. Randy McCall coming in. The referees working together. You know, and, and Ben, just to finish that point, it's not just that. They've got a lot of walk-ons. Uh, Dana uses walk-ons better than anybody for the scout team. They have bodies at practice, but that's who they're playing against. You don't get good play. You need seven-footers playing against other seven-footers. You need these scholarship players playing against the other scholarship players. It's really been difficult for them to get anything accomplished because it's not competitive enough. They don't have ten players available that are healthy. Battle once again doing work. Yeah, and again, no disrespect to scout team players or, or anybody like that, but you don't get that game experience, no. that competitive experience having no, to do that. And it's really hard to catch up in the middle of the year. Uh, practice time is hard to come by, and you know what it's like in the Pac-12 conference. I mean, it's like that schedule coming up, one after the other with Houston and the PK. Nice look there from where finds Waldo Soares going to the basket. But uh, you, you go from... Houston to three games that are going to be killer games in the PK Cup. Then you come right back with Washington State at home, UCLA away, and then you got a couple before January. Once it's January 1, it's nothing but back 12. Foul down low. Yeah, like you mentioned, they got that Cougar team. As Speaking of the Cougars, we check in with the scores from around the Pac-12. Of course, Washington State falling to Prairie View A&M. Oregon State Bush now coming up once we're done right here on Pac-12 Oregon over in Corvallis. And in the second half, San Diego State still on top of Stanford. Yeah, not, not a good start there. You see San Diego uh, up on California, so it's been a, a difficult evening so far. Oregon State will take on Bushnell uh, a little bit later, as will the Southern Cal Trojans uh, against the Catamounts from Vermont. That's some trip. I can imagine. <laughs> From Vermont out to Los Angeles to play the University of Southern California. Yeah, that game coming up after us. Oregon State looking for their third win after winning just three games total last season. I'll tell you what, their uh, really impressive start uh, for Wayne Tinkle's group, uh, I'll tell you what, and, and surprisingly, uh, a freshman doing doing a lot of the damage. There we go. Keyshawn. Bartholomew again from three. Keyshawn's done a good job tonight uh, shooting the ball, shooting it with a lot of confidence and looks good. Just to, to finish, uh, K.J. Simpson was the player of the week for Colorado, but the freshman was Jordan Pope from Oregon State showing the way for the Beavers. Biddle with the rebound. Yeah, I, I had their game back on Friday night against Florida A&M. Jordan Pope, he, he's the real deal. He's going to be a big-time freshman for Wayne Tinkle. And they needed that opportunity to play, and he's stepping up, and he's finishing. Four minutes to go here in the ballgame. Where? On the block. Boy, a heater over to Biddle. Yeah, he did. That was a good catch by Nate. And another moving screen Biddle on Biddle. Again. And again, we harped on it all night with the injuries that he's had in his career so far here in Eugene. It's a little bit of a scary sight if you're Dana Allman or this Oregon squad. No question. I remember he and Bo Bo seemed to spend the uh, the entire year. Bo Bo was pushing that little cart, and there's a good steal right there. Will Richardson anticipated 
The backdoor pass from Nick Gazalis. Five Ducks in double figure scoring tonight. It's under three and a half to go. Big thing for the Ducks tonight. Their three point shooting definitely has improved. 11 of 26, 42% from the baseline. Boy, Khalil Ware, he doesn't play like a freshman, does he? Oh, well, Khalil Ware's coming out, party, combining with excellent defense the entire game. They dominated on the glass, and as you said, made some threes. You make some threes, a lot of good things happen offensively. Richardson off the fake baseline. By the way, a season high for Will Richardson with 12 points. Biddle off the bait. Strong take. Offensive foul. The Bills put the ball on the floor a number of times tonight. Don't know if the defender had his feet set that time, but again, showing the diversity to his game. I'll tell you what, you got a sophomore, Nate Biddle, and a freshman, Khalil Ware, can do an awful lot of different facets of the game on the floor at a very young age they can shoot it they handle it they put it on the floor they get off the ground and they block shots as Dane Allman starts to empty his bench a little bit Brady Paris checks in for Oregon off the hop step McMahon Patrick McMahon's going to earn himself some more playing time uh, he's done a good job did a good job in the Long Beach State game and he's been aggressive and effective tonight for Danny Sprinkle and meanwhile, for Montana State, and it's been Oregon's defense. That was phenomenal. Just under 30% from the floor tonight for the Bobcats. Williams, strong, slash in the lane. Tell you what, you look up, you say, well, we're clearing the bench, and you still look out there, there's still a pair of seven-footers out on the floor, a freshman and a sophomore. <laughs> Great Osibor can't believe it. That's the first time he's seen the rim tonight. He's looked up, and he's seen nothing but yellow jerseys and long arms. Yeah, those are his first points tonight, his first field goal. Reichel had that one swatted away. Gets it done on both ends. And the two-on-one. And takes off for a jam. Great Osibor can't believe it. Two in a row to the rim. Just shows you how difficult it's been all night for Montana State to get anything done in the paint. The slopping Dana Altman does not like that. We talked about turnovers has been a little bit of a problem. Year in and year out, that's a big plus for the Oregon Ducks. Great Osibor on a tear wow. right now. Seven unanswered by him. And a timeout called by Dana Allman. It's going to be one of those uh, yep. substitute timeouts. Danny Sprinkle gets his guys in. Dana gets his guys in. He's, talk, he's talking to Nate. He's still teaching. He's still coaching because he knows he's going to need meaningful minutes against teams that have seven-footers themselves. Right. Nate Biddle's not always going to have the size advantage that the Ducks enjoyed tonight. Williams again with a strong take and a finish. That's his move. He's a slasher. He's really good at finishing. And he knows how to score. You mentioned number one in the country, the Grayson County Community College out of Texas. Off the handoff, the kick out. That one short. Put back, no good. And Khalil Ware with another rebound. Well, the Ducks needed a bounce back game, and they really came in and did an excellent job. That does not look even remotely like the team that played against University of California, Irvine. No, not at all. 53% from the floor for the Ducks, 42% from downtown. And we highlighted earlier in this one, this is a Duck team who was last in the Pac-12 at 22% from beyond the arc. Long three on the way, and the bank shot good. Dana's upset. He yeah. looked over to Danny Sprinkle. He said, you know, he doesn't blame. Brady wants to get his shot up. He wanted him to throw it straight up in the air so the clock wouldn't have gone off. But um, he'll know next time. And Danny Sprinkle certainly understands. Yeah. He's been on that end of games like this himself.